said, I have the great privilege to introduce our presenter today, Dr. Julia Carroll. She is the Director of Dermatology here at MedCan. She's known for her ethical and natural approach to beauty, um, its subtle and effective rejuvenation treatments. She's a frequent guest. You may recognize her from ET Canada, the Global Morning Show, and she's also a lecturer at University of Toronto and the consulting dermatologist for L'Oreal Paris Canada. She's an active member of the Canadian Dermatology Association and also on staff at the University of Toronto Medical School. Uh, so without further ado, I will bring Dr. Carroll on board. Dr. Carroll, thanks for joining us. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Okay, so today we're talking about um, injectables and what you can expect from the next half hour is we're going to take a look at the process of aging just so we have a background as to what, you know, what we're looking at. We're going to review some of the procedures and, and um, not products actually, sorry, yeah, some of the procedures and products actually that we have at our disposal at MedCan. And then we'll talk about tips for finding the right doctor and choosing the right procedures to help you achieve your goals. Hopefully a lot of that will answer your questions, and then, but we we'll, can get to questions at the end as well. So this is a, a quote that I love because um, I think it really speaks to um, what we do as cosmetic dermatologists and that really there is a, a, a significant amount of art to what we do. So we're going to jump right in. Um, when we look at aging, we talk about the three Ds of aging. Um, we see that skin deteriorates somewhat, and we get deflation or loss of volume, and then descent. Sometimes we get some dropping and sagging, and not everyone will experience all of these, and everyone will, um, will have these in, in a uh, variety of sort of levels as well. Next slide. Great. So then th that's the bad news. The good news is that we uh, have a lot at our disposal um, that can improve uh, these issues. So we talk about the four R's of rejuvenation to, uh, as an antidote to the three D's of aging. So relax is Botox. We can um, refill and recontour, shape the face, and we use filler for that. For people that have issues with uh, the, the, the the skin itself, so the texture and the, the look of skin, we can do chemical peels and some laser resurfacing, and then we can also redrape. We can lift and tighten with some of our devices as well. So these are the products we're going to look at today. So neuromodulator, which is also known as Botox, dermal filler. There's a variety of them. Cellfill and Belkyra. So neuromodulator, more commonly known as Botox. Um, there's also two other brands available in Canada, Zeoman and Discord, and um, I use all of them. I think they have slightly different personalities, but in the right hands you can get great results with all of them. In terms of where we use these products, um, mostly in the upper face, and it's for lines that are due to movement. So basically the product is injected, and it stops or diminishes the communication between muscles and nerves. So the classic area that we use it is in the, uh, the center of the forehead, and I'm going to show you some pictures for that. Very safe product. It's been around for 25 plus years. It was originally a medical product, and then accidentally um, it was discovered that it improved the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. And there's been over 15 million treatments worldwide, and has a very high satisfaction rate. So in terms of side effects, we use very, very small needles to do it, but it still is a needle, so sometimes there can be a little bit of bruising. Very rarely you might get a headache, or if it's uh, place inappropriate. Sometimes you can get a little droop in the eye, but very uncommon. Um, it takes about five to 14, fourteen days to work, and for most people, it lasts about three to four months. Now, people always ask, "Will I look frozen?" Well, really, it depends on the dose and it depends on the type of muscles you have. So, some of my patients really want to look like they're moving and and like nothing has been done, and so those people we won't will use very little. And there are other people who really want certain areas not to move at all, and that's possible. It's not my preference, but is variable uh, in what you can do. And if you stop, that's a common question. Everything will just slowly go back to where it was before, probably still even a little bit better, um, but there's, you, you can stop and start. There's no harm that way. So with the procedure, so we're going to take some photos. You'll see there's going to be a pattern here. We're going to go through this a few times. We prep the face. We always check in, whether it's your first time or your tenth time, we always check in and, and sort of reassess. The product is injected. We have lots of uh, tricks that we use so that you don't feel the little needles. 
Um, and like I said, it takes about five to 14 days to, um, to kick in. A lot of times I'll follow people up after the first time and make sure everyone's happy. And then we retreat again in three to four months. And we like regular conservative use because um, that tends to be preventative. So this is a forehead line. Um, so you can see the before and after, probably about two weeks after. The only, um, and the cost is around $200. It depends, again, on how much you want and the muscles um, that we're working with. Um, the caution here would be if you already have a heavy brow, but despite that, you, you don't like the lines in the forehead, we would use less or we may skip that the first time around and treat other areas and see how it goes. And then this is a very classic area. It's called the glabella or the 11. Uh, great area to start with. No one really ever misses this frown unless you're like me, a mom of a five-year-old, and I need to use that to get things that are in my house. Um, but uh, so this is the glabella. And if, and if anyone's you know, looking to dip their toe into the world of Botox, this is an excellent place to start. Crow's feet, another very common area. We can move to the next. And then this is just a progression to sort of see. So we're treating those 11 for her. So you can see at day seven, she's trying to make that motion and it's not able to. Again, for me, in my case, this is a bit too frozen looking. Um, day 90, still not being able to move at the three month mark. And then at day 120, she's starting to get some movement back, but still not as significant as before treatment. And then, you know, we, we talk about the special areas that we, can, that we can do because we know the traditional areas that we've just gone over, but I always like to educate people that there's a few other little interesting uses for Botox. Um, let's get to those. So this is a brow lift. So uh, some people think it's something we need surgically, but we can actually, by manipulating the muscles in the eyebrows and around the eyes, we can actually get some lift in the brow. And then a gummy smile. For some people, this is a, a bothersome smile. They don't like the, uh, the appearance of uh, the gums when they smile. So we can actually use the properties of Botox to weaken a little bit of the muscle around the nose and then produce what is um, supposed to be a more attractive smile. And then facial swimming. This is a really interesting use. So the muscles along the sides of the jaw are called the masseters. And if you're a tooth grinder, you probably have very strong masseters. Um, and it makes the face a little bit squared out looking. So with the use of uh, Botox in those muscles, you can um, shape the face on the side. Then this is an interesting one called the Nefertiti Lift, named after an Egyptian queen. Um, and if you, if you have a strong, strong muscles in your neck, even when you're not making that movement that she's making um, on the left-hand side, it can pull down the sides of the face and, and make the jawline not quite as attractive as we'd like it to be. So by manipulating those muscles and decreasing their power, we can actually get um, a straighter and more like a Nefertiti uh, look to the jawline. And then I always just put this one in to remember that it's not all just for women. We have Brotox as well. Um, and at MedCan, this is uh, a large uh, part of, uh, of our cosmetic business. Okay, so now we're on to dermal filler. Um, the most common one is hyaluronic acid, and this is a naturally occurring sugar. It's something that we have in our dermis, or the middle part of our skin, and, um, and it's a product that's been obviously uh, manufactured, but it's the same substance. So common names are Juvederm, Restylane, and Bellotero. Um, generally, we use it in lines that are present uh, when you're not moving, so fixed lines versus the Botox that we use in lines from movement. But now and now, now more and more, we're getting away from actually just filling lines, and we're looking more at volume and reshaping and not just chasing down lines. Because we found over time that if someone's bothered by a line and we erase it, they, it doesn't really improve the appearance. Um, the line is just gone, but they still may look tired. They still may look um, you know, stressed. And so uh, we really changed our philosophy on that. It has a 20-year safety history. And the nice thing about the, these dermal fillers is that they are reversible. So all good cosmetic uh, dermatologists keep something called hyaluronidase in their fridge. And um, luckily, it's not there, used very often, but it's always nice to have on hand. It can be injected into the, um, into the filler, and the filler will dissolve. Um, in terms of side effects, again, mostly things related to the needle. So you can get a little bit of swelling. It can be a bit tender, and sometimes there's bruising. And the products that they're making now are lasting longer and longer. So it used to be six months on average, but now some of the products have claims for up to two years. 
in the procedure. So again, we're going to take photos, we're going to prep the face, we'll check in every time and just see what we're looking to do that day. We inject it with needles, but we can also use something called a micro cannula. So this is a, a tool that we use where we then make a small entry point, and then with just that one entry point, we can get to lots of different places in the face. It really decreases the risk of bruising, and it's much more comfortable. So in certain areas, um, we're able to use a cannula, and, um, and it's, it's very popular with our patients as well as to go right back to work with um, with no issues. Again, we use our little tricks to uh, make sure things are comfortable. Some of our patients like to have numbing cream put on before, and that's possible. You see the effects right away, um, but it does take about um, two weeks for things to settle in, and then we retreat six, 24 months, depending on what the goal is. So there's just some examples um, of someone who's had a full face treatment. So you can see she looks still like herself, but her eyes are a bit more open. The lines are a little bit diminished, but she's not reading like someone who's had filler. Yeah. Same thing here. Um, this is another woman who's had filler. So it's just reshaped her face. She looks, you know, her eyes are more open. She looks less tired. The area around the mouth um, isn't holding the tension that it was, um, and just looks more attractive. And this is actually, this is a, a patient of mine who's um, in, in an ad campaign that's coming out soon. And this is a combination that we did of um, both um, a filler and their modulator. Um, she was a, a mom, uh, she's an older mom. Uh, she has, a, I think, a five-year-old. And she was doing like the grandma on the, uh, around the park. And so she came to me and she just wanted, she wanted to, um, to everyone to know that she was the mom and not the grandma. That was her request. And so this is what we did. That was about two weeks in between. So then again, there's some special areas and unique products that I thought it would be interesting to touch on. So the first one is um, around the mouth. This is an area that, um, that a lot of women, in particular, and actually not men, uh, carry a lot of lines uh, around the mouth. And it, it, it looks as if they've been a smoker, even though the majority of times they haven't been. So this is an area that we, that we do work with a lot. A lot of people are nervous about um, filler in the lips or in that area because they think they're going to look duck-like or like the blowfish kind of look. But this is just to show that we can restore the area around the mouth and keep it looking natural and not necessarily changing the shape or the size of the lip, um, but just supporting that area so it balances the face. And tear trough. So this is the area under the eyes. And this is an interesting area that we do because we do it on uh, people of all ages. So, um, you know, younger patients all the way up to, um, you know, 70, 80 year old patients that we have. But it's an area that is really rewarding to do because with just a little bit of product, you can just take away the hollowing under the eyes and it just makes people look very well rested and they can put away the concealer. And this is just another example of a, a tear trough just post op. But it's easy procedure to do and just it's, it's, um, makes a big difference in, in the experience. And then this is called Sculptra. So it's a slightly different um, filler. It's not hyaluronic acid. It has a bit more structure to it and tends to last around 20 months for most people. And chest is an area that we're doing a, a lot of this product on because a lot of people, they've sort of done what they want on the face, and but they've sometimes, even in terms of sunscreen, they've been very careful with sunscreen on the face, but then they've neglected the chest and that's starting to show some signs of aging. So just to show that it's another area that we do. And then hands are a very popular treatment right now. So I tend to use a product called Radiesse in the hands. Again, it's another filler type product. Um, and just showing the, you know, the hand on the left, which is just aging. And again, if you've got everything going, if you've got everything under control on the face, um, the hands can give away the age. So we tend to do a lot of treatment, um, chest and hands as well, so everything matches. And then this is just another, uh, another product, the, the one we did in the chest. We're showing it again for a full face rejuvenation um, uh, with Sculptra. And Sculptra is a nice product because it's injected. And, and then it sort of, the next day, it almost looks like nothing was done. And then it very, very gradually fills in with your own collagen. So it makes your own collagen grow. So the look is very natural because where collagen naturally wouldn't be, it's not going to grow. So it only grows where, um, where it would have been in the past. And then we have a really interesting product called Cell Fill. And in the media, um, it's called the Vampire Facial. 
but we call it platelet-rich plasma. And we use this in uh, fine lines. Um, I love it in the under eye area for a crazy skin that you can see under the eyes, and also in necks, which can be tricky to treat. Um, in terms of safety, um, when we get to the uh, procedure itself, um, you'll find out that it's actually you being injected back into you. So again, we're injecting it. So in terms of side effects, you may have, sorry, that should say tiny needles. Um, so we use, again, small needles. And we could also use cannulas, depending. You may get some bruising. It takes about six to eight weeks to see the results, but it can last up to two years. And the procedure, um, so leading the day before, I uh, ask the patients to consume a large amount of water. Then we're going to take some photos. Um, the, uh, you know what, I'm sorry, this slide is not the correct one, but that's okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have you drink lots of water. No, you can keep it on that slide. We're going to drink lots of water, and then you're going to come into the office. We actually take blood from you, as if you were at the lab getting blood taken. Take that blood out of the room. We, we spin it, we put it through a cycle, and we remove certain parts of it that we don't want, and we come back with just a clear liquid, and that's actually what's injected into those areas. Um, you get a little bit of swelling sometimes afterwards, and then it sort of slowly goes away. And then like the sculpture product, it will gradually fill in. And so what it's doing is it, it's mimicking um, what happens if you, so you cut your arm. The first thing that shows up is something called a platelet, and that signals the repair cycle to begin. So we sort of trick the body by putting the platelets in that area, the body thinks that there might have been some damage or trauma, and it just starts replicating everything that's in that area. So again, very natural, um, and we're just turning on or, or amping up the production in the area that we um, injected into. Let me show you some examples. So this is cell cell under the eye. So really great, natural result. She still looks exactly like herself, um, but just the eye area is improved, and I think it's actually interesting too because that's the only thing that's been done but in fact I think her face looks slimmer um, just because the focus is now on the on the eyes and she doesn't have that under eye sort of tired appearance but very subtle and then neck is lines this is a great area to do it because this is a tricky area to treat um, and this is um, uh, someone who's had the neck is lines done um, this procedure also I didn't mention that we do it Every, we do it usually two sessions. So we would do it, we'd bring you back to eight weeks later, we would do it again, and then from the majority of my patients, they're good for up to two years. And then finally, um, Belkyra. So in the U.S., this is known as Kybella, um, and they've had it for one year more than we have, and we've had it for almost two years. So we've, we've had it for almost one year now, and they've had it for two. Um, and it's an interesting product. So it's actually a bile salt, which is something that, um, that we have in our stomachs, um, and that dissolves fat when we are digesting food. So they recreated this, and it's used on, on label. It's used uh, to reduce double chins, which will improve the appearance of the jawline. Particularly safe product, again, been two years on the market, but the real truth is that um, physicians have been compounding and getting a pharmacist to make something like this up for decades. So it's just that now it's a commercially available available product and um, because it, that's um, commercially available there's a lot more advertising, a lot more um, consumer awareness um, and so it, it's, a, it's a big growing um, growing area. So in terms of side effects, let's go back to these. Yeah, thank you. Um, you can get significant swelling with this product so you, you have to time it properly. Um, but the swelling goes down, and there might be a little bruise, might be a tiny bit tender. Um, but this is one we do a lot of times in the winter um, because you can hide under a turtleneck, you can hide with a scarf. We tend to not do this as much in the um, in the uh, in the summertime. But the nice part about this one is that the results are permanent. This so is the next slide. So this is a picture actually of us doing it in the office. So again, we're going to take some photos. We're going to prep the face. There's a lot of marking that gets done. You can see with this person, they've got the white lines all over them, so we mark out the exact area. Then we actually apply a temporary tattoo, which just guides us as to the um, exact um, grid, the pattern that we want to use to get optimum results. It's injected with small needles. We ice it right afterwards. There's a little bit of stinging that happens, and we ice it, and that tends to help a lot. Um, and then again, there is 
swelling. So it's something that we do a lot of on Fridays so people can hide out over the weekend. But we tell our patients to embrace the swelling because the more you swell, the better the results. And then we'll check again six to eight weeks. With this treatment, it takes usually an average of two to four treatments for most people. And then the results are permanent. We haven't seen anybody, once they're fully treated, have to be retreated so far. And here's some examples. So we're looking at the area under the chin. It's called the submental fullness or the double chin. And there's a before and there's an after. I think that patient had uh, three treatments. And the next one, and this is a, a procedure we do a lot for, uh, for men. And this is a gentleman that uh, I believe had four treatments. And then just in terms of, in general, what we're looking at um, for all of these procedures. So I always tell patients to plan around a major event. The day before your wedding is not a great day to come in um, and have something injected. But six weeks before your wedding, that's fine. But you just have to always be aware that there's always a slight chance with these procedures that you do get some bruising. Um, so it's better to just uh, plan around major events than take the chance. There are certain medications that we counsel people not to take because they can increase the risk of breathing, aspirin, blood thinners, vitamin E. Um, if you do have an, an, an infection, uh, we usually get people to reschedule um, if it's in the exact treatment area, like a skin infection. If you have a cold or something, it's usually not a big deal. And then just relax. You're in good hands. We're MedCan, and um, we have an excellent team of uh, curated uh, physicians, and, uh, sorry, dermatologists and plastic surgeons. And then, this is something that um, I just came across this quote um, a few days ago, and, and it's about music, but it kind of reminded me of what we do. So a good musician, you know, they skip some notes sometimes, they change the music a little bit, and it's those spaces in between that's part of the music. And I think for us as cosmetic dermatologists, that it's always as, it's as much about what, how, much we, how much we do as, and how much we don't do, knowing when to stop, knowing what's enough, um, so there, that is the, the art to this. So in our philosophy um, at MedCan is we always start with the skin. So we want to make sure everyone's using good sunscreen, good skin care products so that the surface of the skin is great. Um, there's a lot to be said for prevention. There's lots of studies that show that doing a little bit of Botox often and just small amounts um, can prevent the, uh, the progression of, um, of wrinkles. Less is more. I always tell my patients that I can always add more, but let's start slow and then see what happens. Um, and as I said before, particularly with any of these things, it's customizable to your objective. So if you, know, if you want to change everything, that's possible. If you just want to deal with one little area and you want it to be very subtle, that's possible too. So we always talk about combining procedures, things done together, um, have a have synergy. And, but being intelligent about how we use it, keeping an eye on things, being diligent, and just being elegant in terms of you know, the style and, and the look that we are trying to achieve. And then I always tell my patients, you have three faces. So don't forget your neck, your chest, and your hands. And that goes for skincare as well. And then this, you know, there's a lot of, um, I think, misconceptions out there about, oh, I don't want Botox because I'm going to look funny or overdone. But I always say, you know, don't blame the paint, blame the painter. So it's really most important who's at the end of the needle versus what's in the needle. Um, and it, it's really important to choose the, the right position and have a frank conversation about exactly what you're looking to do. And there we are, the right choices. So uh, lots of people have access to these products. And um, there's lots of people that are injecting in basements and hair salons. And you know, it, in my opinion, it's a, it's a procedure. And I think it should be done by a physician. Um, ideally, a dermatologist or a plastic surgeon, those are what we call the core cosmetic specialties. Caution with some physicians who, you know, they start off as a cardiologist and then they sort of slowly shift their practice into this. Um, and it's called practice drift. I think that's, that's dangerous. Um, and you want to be a proper facility, again, not in someone's basement, not in the back of the hair salon. And communication and culture. So when you speak to the physician and, and you have your initial consultation, are they hearing what you're saying? Or they keep saying, yeah, 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 we'll do this. You know, so are you having that communication? What does the physician look like? Do they look normal? And what does their staff look like? That gives you a good idea of what their, uh, their philosophy is and their, uh, their style. And then in terms of the procedure, you know, I always think a little bit of buyer beware. So if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. You know, these procedures 
um, aren't faceless. Um, they're great to put off a facelift. They're great for someone who's, you know, cautious about uh, surgery or uh, someone who just wants a little tweak. I always suggest you just start with one or two areas. A little bit goes a long way. You can always add more if you need to. None of it lasts forever, with the exception of the Belkyra. Um, so really maintenance is key. So one of the things we always do at the end of our appointment is sort of check in and figure out what the next step is, what the next plan is, and we're always reassessing that. And then, again, don't forget your at-home care, using good skin care products, and um, combining with lasers is also, um, is also a great, uh, gives great synergy. Next step, so the thyroid telling patients, educate yourself. Read about it, talk to friends, um, and so you've, you've done that today. You've attended the webinar, so that's great. Book a consultation. We're always happy to chat, um, and uh, so we have um, an excellent uh, staff of consultants that they can chat with you, and then and when you see the physicians, we always start with a mini consultation again just to review and make sure that we're on the same, same page. Decide on your goals. What is it that you want to achieve? And for me, I think I, I prefer not looking at specific lines or spots, but looking more at, um, at do I want to look less tired? Do I want to look, um, uh, you know, happier? So I think those are things to do. Um, and then discuss your goals again with your physician and establish a plan. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Carroll. So we do have a few questions, and we're going to get Great. to the question section in just a moment. I'm just going to take a few moments to speak about dermatology at MedCan. So as Dr. Carroll um, so eloquently shared with us today, you know, the MedCan approach to uh, dermatology is all about um, that your skin is an outward reflection of your wellness and can be a big part of your inner confidence. And our solutions here are, and our treatments and our products are based on medical evidence and administered by physicians and experts with advanced training. And um, the team will work with each client to achieve their, their skin health goals. So um, if you have any questions or have um, would like to book a consultation, please uh, learn more information at medcan.com or you can call uh, 416-350-5900 extension 5938 or you can email dermatology at medcan.com. All right, so we have a few moments. We're going to go to questions. Uh, our first question is, uh, does Botox in injections leave small marks on the skin? It really depends on the patient. So again, they are little needles that go into the face. So some people, they get it done, they walk out, it's like nothing ever happened. There is a chance of getting a bruise. There are some people that right away you may, uh, you may see like little, almost just like little mosquito bites, but the majority of patients tell me that um, by the time they've gotten back to the office that, that those have disappeared. So it's really a, sort of a lunchtime procedure. You can get done and no one's going to be the wiser. What about uh, burst capillaries on the skin? Okay, so that would be laser. Um, so we have a laser called an NDAG and one called an IPL, and those lasers will target red, which is how it gets to the blood vessels. Okay, thanks. And that was the next question. What type of laser treatments do you recommend? Uh, well, it depends on the person. So we, that's really where you have to have an assessment. There's as many lasers out there as there are brands of cars. Hmm. Um, so it depends on whether you're going for brown spots, red spots, just a you know overall rejuvenation. We're looking at really etched in lines. There is a huge, um, a huge spectrum of lasers. Okay, thank you. And what about um, are there any foods or drinks that I should avoid before treatment? That's a good question. Um, so when we give our patients instructions on things to avoid um, in terms of medication, we also know that things like ginkgo biloba, uh, chia seeds, they can, in, they can um, increase your risk of bruising. You see that the trend here while we're trying to decrease the risk of bruising. However, pineapple can actually help um, if you have bruising or help prevent bruising. Wow, that's so interesting. Yeah. And then finally, um, can I work out before or after my treatment? So exercise, sweating. Uh, I'm happy to have people work out before. Um, working out after, um, it depends. So Botox, probably no problem. Um, I wouldn't want anyone to put any pressure on their face right afterward. So it depends, I guess, what type of exercise you're doing. Um, if you do happen to get a little bruise and then you work out, it, which raises your blood pressure, it may make the bruising worse. So it's not harmful. It's just that aesthetically, we're trying to, you know, avoid bruising. Okay. And then you did mention some costs. The next question is, what are typical costs of fillers? So the fillers, um, I'm going to pop my head. I think the fillers at MedCan 
are they range between seven and eight hundred dollars. Um, but it really, you know, it 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 depends on like in terms of how many. It really depends. Like some people, I will just use one, and there's other people where, like for example, the the patient that I showed you who's in the ad, I think we use ten. Okay. Yeah, so it's probably best to come in for a consultation Absolutely. and then speak to someone. Yeah. Okay, well, we can work within the budget, too, of what, you know, we're very flexible. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Carroll. Thank you very much for everyone who joined us today, and this concludes our online seminar. I hope you have a great evening. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.